The winner of the Nokia Business Innovation Award goes to Leslie Monroe. Oh, my goodness. Let me just collect my thoughts and my breath and... Oh, what an amazing experience this has been for me. Um, when, it first, when I was first nominated, I thought, oh, yes, I'll do this. It sounds fantastic. And as I got through and started to go through the whole process and all the things that I had to write about myself was a really cathartic experience. So I'd, uh, I'd recommend it to anybody, any woman in the Territory who would like to have a go, give it a go and enjoy it because it's great fun. Firstly, I'd like to thank Nokia and all that is involved with the Telstra Business Women's Award for this incredible opportunity and the journey it is taking me on. It has been a very humbling experience. I would like to congratulate my fellow finalists. I am very proud to be associated with such a fantastic group of women that have achieved so much in the Territory. To my wonderful husband, Ian, who has been by my side for 25 years through thick and thin. Thank you. I'd also like to thank everybody for coming along today to show your support and help us celebrate women in business across Australia. My husband and I first arrived in Darwin in 2000 and for a, we were going on it, um, we wanted to come up here for a two week caravan holiday and we couldn't believe what a vibrant city Darwin was and the weather was second to none. Mind you, we arrived in the dry season. <laughs> we had sold our successful production company and were embarking on a two year around Australia trip but after six weeks, we decided this wasn't for us. So we made the decision and came to Darwin and have made this wonderful city our home. Not long after our arrival, I started volunteering down at Riding for Disabled in the Top End. I have always had a passion for horses and grew up with a cousin with Down syndrome. So this seemed to be the logical place to start. After two years having gained my level two coaching accreditation with the Australian Institute of Sport, I was asked by the then RDANT Inc board to take on the position as centre manager. The centre was only small and I could see many opportunities to increase its relevance within the community and also its sustainability. The centre was being run as a non-profit community organisation. I wanted to run it as, for, as a not-for-profit organisation and run it as a business. I had in place a 10-year plan which was unfortunately interrupted when I was forced to um, go down south to have a triple bypass and both my hips replaced. During my absence, the centre sadly fell into decline and within 12 months was closed. Upon my return, although disheartened with no clients and only three horses, but with the support of my family, the community and our patron Wayne Zerby, we reopened the centre in 2009 and within 12 months we had 120 clients and 20 horses. <laughs> 60 local businesses contributed their um, goods and services and rebuilt RDA in the top end into a state-of-the-art equestrian centre and it was, a, it was really a, a backyard blitz on steroids. We had so many people and so many businesses come down to help the to put this centre back together again. In these times of economic uncertainty and for RDA and the top end to survive as a not-for-profit organisation, I needed to look out the side, outside of the square and expand. Through work experience groups from various schools, our reputation as a caring and nurturing environment grew and I was approached by the Education Department and the Department of Justice to help with programs for youth at risk within the community. This has proven to be very successful and we now have expanded again to include disengaged youth who are now enrolled with Catherine School of the Air and do their schooling down at the centre. Writing for Disabled in the Top End has become an, an incredible, valuable community resource, working with the Department of Justice, youth diversion programs within the NT Police, Department of Education, working, work experience and community pathway programs and the list goes on and on. Though, it has been a though at times it has been a bit of a bumpy road, it has given myself and many of my clients and supporters a huge sense of achievement. One example of this achievement is a young boy with Down syndrome who was non-verbal and very frightened. He came with his school and was very tentative. After many weeks, we finally got him on a horse and after much encouragement, he attained joy. One morning after mounting his horse target, this little boy said, walk on. There are many tears from teachers, volunteers and parents. These were his first words. The downside, 
we now can't shut him up. <laughs> I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the NT government, our sponsors, volunteers, students and staff, and I would like to invite you all to come down to the centre and experience my little piece of heaven. Thank you. Aww.